So I'm sure you have heard about GPT-1, GPT-2, and GPT-3. Uh, now we are going to talk about GPT-1, and then we are going to cover GPT-2 and GPT-3 later on. Uh, so what is the idea? The idea is the same as what we saw for ELMO, but now you are using the decoder part of a transformer rather than LSTMs. Again, you have unsupervised pre-training. That's your corpus. Your task is, given the context, predict the next word. Uh, now you're going to have a transformer decoder rather than, a, rather than an LSTM. That's your context vector of tokens. Then we know that for transformers, not only you need to do word embeddings, but also you need to do position embedding because you're processing the entire sentence in one pass in parallel. And then you're going to have multiple blocks of transformers. These are like multiple layers of LSTMs. So you're stacking one layer on top of each other. And you're going to have L layers. L is counting the layers. Each one of these guys is a sequence. A sequence goes in, a sequence comes out. Then you can take the last layer, the output of your last layer, multiply it by a weight matrix. That's going to give you your probability of the next word. That's your pre-training. So you do your pre-training on your unlabeled data. It's very simple. The only change is that you're using a transformer decoder. You are not using an LSTM anymore. Then you can do supervised fine tuning. Somebody gives you a new data set. This is a labeled data set. Previously, this is unlabeled. This is labeled. This is unsupervised. This is supervised. You have your input tokens. And let's say your task is sentiment analysis, classification. A sentence goes in, then you need to say the probability of that sentence belonging to a class. What is that? And then you're going to have the corresponding label. This is input data, output data. You can take the last layer. And from the last layer, you can take the last entry of your sequence. This could be your final transformer block, blocks activation. You take that, you push it through a softmax. It's going to have its own parameters. And that's going to give you the probability distribution. Now you can have a loss function corresponding to this objective, your classification objective. Let's say this is L2. You had L1. And then you're going to optimize this. You're going to fine tune these parameters. So you're going to optimize this uh, Wy in addition to fine tuning whatever parameters that you had in your transformer. And that's how you're doing your transfer learning. If you have only L2 of C, you might run into the trouble because you don't have enough data sometimes. You can add the unsupervised loss that we just defined up there, but now on the corpus, on the labeled corpus. And then you can try to pr properly weight the two. Okay, that's going to give you a loss three, and that's what you're going to optimize during fine tuning. So this is a paradigm of pre-training, fine-tuning. You pre-train on unlabeled data, you fine-tune on supervised data. So let's see the type of tasks that you're going to have. You take, you take your text and position embedding. That's your text and position embedding. You push it through your transformer, and you can have 12 of them. L here is 12. Because we are dealing with the decoder part of our transformer, this is masked uh, multi-attention multi-head self-attention. And then you had a layer norm. You pushed it through feed-forward neural network. So we covered the decoder part of a transformer last session. And then you have two heads. One is the task classification head, which has its own WI. And then you can have a text prediction, predict the next word. It's going to have its own head. It's WE. So let's take a look at some of the tasks. You can do classification. A sentence goes in, you push it through your transformer, and then you can classify it. You can solve the entailment problem uh, given the premises. Is this hypothesis true or no? Now you're taking the start premises, a delimiter. The hypothesis, the extract is where you're extracting your classification uh, hidden state. You push it through your transformer. That's going to give you your probability. Is this following? or no. Are these two sentences similar? We can take them and push them through this uh, LSTM, sorry, this uh, transformer blocks. And in the end, uh, are these similar or no? That's going to give you a probability 
for multiple choice question answering. Somebody gives you the context, it gives you multiple answers, and then you're gonna output the probability of the first answer, the second answer, and the third answer being the correct answer. And then you're gonna choose the one that is giving you the highest probability. So you can solve multiple different problems through the same paradigm. You first do your pre-training and then you do your fine tuning. Here are some data sets for you to explore. Some of them are for natural language inference, this entailment task that we saw. Some of them are question answering. Some of them are sentence similarity. Are these two sentences similar? And some of them are classification like SST. And then for lateral language inference, what are these acronyms? And what is the task actually? The task is uh, entailment, contradiction, or neutral. You give it two sentences. Is this a logical entailment of this sentence? Or is it a contradiction? Or they don't have any relationship. The relationship between them is neutral. So SNLI are coming from image captions. MNLI, this multi-NLI, are transcribed speech, popular fiction, and government reports. QNLI is coming from Wikipedia articles. Uh, SciTail are scientific exams or science exams. News articles, RT. Semantic textual similarity and corpus of lingual linguistic accessibility, that's COLA. And that's a classification task. So using the same paradigm, you can first pre-train, fine tune, and solve multiple different tasks. And these usually are much smaller data sets compared to unlabeled corpus that you find on the internet. Any questions? So the supervised fine tuning is task specific? Exactly. Okay. So this supervised fine tuning depends on the objective function that you have. But well, the architecture is the same. You are just changing your inputs and then the output, you're modifying it a little bit. Any other questions? Um, these start, extract, delim are special word tokens? Yes, exactly. This is the start of the sentence. That's the, you can say that's the end of the sentence token. Okay. The other question I had was the, the position embedding matrix just gets linearly added. So it every, every single H0 gets exactly the same position embedding? Uh, no. So the notation here is a little bit sloppy. Don't worry about it. You're just reading off the position of this matrix. So you have a large matrix that is mapping one to a vector, two to a vector, three to another vector, and then you're reading off the corresponding entry. So you're should it be the, I, the ith entry? Would it be closer notation to just put a parentheses around we plus wp, and then your u vector gets multiplied into both of those to solve? Uh, so your... yes, don't worry about the notation. Okay. The notation, uh, don't worry about it. This is that's fine. As long as you get the concept, that's fine. So the, fir the first word always gets a certain vector. Exactly, yes. And the second word in a sentence always gets a certain vector and, and so on. Yes, the position embedding, we covered it for uh, the convolutional neural network. That was the one with like the messy looking sine and cosine function. And uh, we also covered it for the translation. Yeah. Attention is all you need. So we covered it. Don't worry about oh, the notation over there is more precise. Okay. Okay. There is a question on the chat. One detail I missed from last class is how you do your class prediction, class prediction softmax from the last layer of your transformer. Since you have a variable number of vectors, do you just do the class prediction from the last vector in the sequence? Yes. So that's exactly what we are doing here. You take the last layer. That's a sequence, and the, that this is the last element of your sequence. See, this M corresponds to this M. So that's the last element of your sequence. And that's exactly the location where you have the extract. Does that answer your question? Okay, perfect.